this to return. Okay. Now again, if we have these three letters, fa and in lam, which means to do, then if we put these in this format, fa'alu, fa'alu means they did. If we take the three letters and combine and put a vowel at the end with an, an alif, which you don't recite, so it becomes fa'alu, fa'alu means something was done in the past tense, did, and third person plural, they did. Okay. So if we apply this rule on these three letters, so it will become ba, vow, alif, and then vow, and alif. So, one more thing happens, this vow is a weak letter, so it is not pronounced. So, this becomes ba, and this alif is written like this. ba -u. Okay. ba means they return, okay, which is the word here. This, this alif is actually the Hamza, you can put a Hamza here like that. And if you take this vow out, you can also write these two together like this. Ba'u <coughs> means they returned in the, like that. They and past tense. Okay? So Ba'u means they returned. And there are few other meanings of this words. You can say they came back with, they returned or they came back with, or they brought upon themselves. What is the next word? Be ghadabin. Okay? So we'll become clear when we translate the next word. Be means with. And next word starts with Ghain, Dwad, and Ba. And this means to be angry. Ghadaba. Ghadab. Ghadaba means to be angry. The word from it, this is Ghadabun, which is the noun, Ghadabun, means anger. <coughs> Ghadabun means anger. Ghadab, or Ghazab we say, this means anger. Okay? Also, this letter ba with the kasra in the beginning is a harfajar. So whenever harfajar comes, it changes these two dhammas into two kasras. And you pronounce bi ghada bin. Separately it is ba and ghada bun. But when you combine these, the effect of this harfajar applies on the last two dhammas and their sound changes into two kasras. So it becomes ghada bin. Bi ghada bin means with anger. Okay. okay. 
and main means from Allah. So this is about one Israel. They returned or they came back with anger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which means they received anger from Allah by this demand. Wabau bi ghadabim min Allah means they, they earned or they returned or they came back or they deserved the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the demand they made and disgrace and misery was imposed upon them. Okay. So this is the meaning of Baa'u bi ghadabin min Allah. Okay. So when you have you are reading this together, you read bi ghadabim and so that's the reason there is a Shadda here. The word is Ghada bin, but when you read, there's a min after that, meme, then your pronunciation will be Ghada bim min Allah. Okay? So they return and they return and they return. Allah's anger came upon them because of they demanded those things and they were disobeying. Okay, so let's continue. Zalika, next word is Zalika. Zalika means dead is. Zalika means dead is. Or such is. That is or such is Dalika. Okay. The next word be anna can be translated as because. Be anna can be whole translated because. And be anna whom is because they. Whom is they? Because they. And they here is Bani Israel, children of Israel. Dalika be anna whom? That is because they. Then we can translate the next two words together. Kanu yak foruna. Okay. Kanu Kanu yak foruna. These words have come many times. First word kanu is from these letters. Kaf, wow, and noon. This means to be. Okay. And kanu is they were. In the past tense. Plural. They were. Kanu means they were. Okay. Next word starts with these three letters. Kaf, Fa, and Ra. Kafara. Kafara means to disbelieve. Or reject. 
reject or disbelieve. Kafara. It also means to be disthankful. Okay, but here one of these two meanings will apply. Kafara to reject or disbelieve. Okay. Also going back to the grammar, if we have these three letters, fa and alam, to do, and if we put a ya in the beginning, and a vuna at the end, of these three letters, it brings the meaning of they do, present tense. Yep. Yaf aluna, yaf aluna means they do. So by adding a ya in the beginning and a vuna at the end, and these have been these things have been repeating. It brings the meaning of present tense. They are doing something in the present tense. They do. So kafara is the same, ya in the beginning and guna at the end, it means they disbelieve or they reject. Or they disbelieve. Now, the word is kanu, which is the past tense, and yak furuna is the present tense. But when these two comes together, the meaning in English will be combining these two, they used to disbelieve. Means they were constantly disbelieving. They had been disbelieving all the time. They used to disbelieve. Kanu yak foruna. They used to disbelieve. <coughs> or they used to reject. What are the next two words? Bi ayatillahi. Okay. So B is one, which means of or with. Ayat. And you can write down ayat like this. Ayat, which is the plural of ayat. Ayat to Ayat is the plural of ayat, one ayatun, so this is signs of Allah. Vayak furuna, kanu yak furuna, and they used to deny or reject or disbelieve of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so whenever any sign came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they denied that they rejected that okay signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is their crime this was their crime that they disobeyed and they rejected the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only that they did that, they did one more thing after that, Allah is mentioning, وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ Okay? So let's look at that. 
the, the word wow means and. And the next word is from these letters Kaf, Ta, and Lam. This means to kill. Katala. Katala means to kill. Katala or Katil or Maktul, these words are common. Katala means to kill. Okay. Now again, if you look at the word, we put a ya in the beginning and guna at the end. It will become yaktoluna. Yaktoluna means they kill. Yaktoluna. Means they kill. Yaktoluna, they kill. <coughs> now, this kanu here, which changes the meaning of yakforuna, they use to deny. This is still going to apply here. So, the meaning will be they used to kill. The kanu, yakforuna, and kanu yaktoluna. They used to disbelieve and they used to kill. So the meaning here will be used to kill. They used to disbelieve the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they used to kill. Kanu yaktoluna. Kanu is a common here, it applies to yakforuna and yaktoluna. And it will bring the meaning of they used to deny and they used to kill. What they used to kill? <coughs> An-Nabiyyina. An-Nabiyyina is the plural of Nabi. Nabi means a prophet. So they used to kill the prophets. They killed many, many prophets. When Israel killed many prophets that came among them. Okay? They killed Zakariya okay? They killed Yahya salam. And there are many other prophets. And according to them, they also killed Isa alayhi salam. Okay? So they killed many, many prophets. Okay? So that is the meaning of an nabiyina Nabi is one prophet. Nabiyina is the plural. Okay? The prophets. They used to kill the prophets. So the next word is the Ghairil Haq. The Ghairil Haq. So, ha, kaf, and kaf okay, are the root letters, and from this, hakun is the word. Hakun means right. Like when I say this is his right, means this is his hak. This is. Or haq also means truth. Okay? But here the meaning will be used as right. Okay? And al in the beginning will be bring the meaning the right. And beghair means without. Ghair means without. Other. Okay? So, Beghair al Haq, Baghair Haq, or Beghair al Haq means without right. They had no right to kill the prophets, but they used to kill the prophets. 
بغير الحق means without right. Again, Dalika is the same word, which that is that is okay. Then the word is be ma asal. Asau is from these three letters. This means to disobey. Asau. So Asau means they disobey. Because Yah will not be pronounced. Okay. So Bima means for they disobeyed. Dalika, this happened to them, means Allah's anger came upon them. Dalika can be translated, that is, that is means the result of. So this happened to them, they received the ghadab of Allah and they were. Uh, they received the disgrace on that. Why? That is Bima Asaw for their disobeying. For they disobeyed. For they disobeyed. And now these two words, Kanu Ya Atadun, will have the similar formation as Kanu Ya Furun or Kanu Ya Tulun. So the word is here Ya Atadun. Okay, so let's look at these words Kanu, which we just look at, they were. This word Ya'atadun is it starts with first of all it starts with these three letters. Okay. But this is a much bigger word. So what happens that two letters are added in this one and alif and a ta. So we make a five letter word from here by adding an alif and a ta like that irtada it means to cross the limit if someone is crossing a limit if some Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting a limit that don't go beyond these boundaries and if someone crosses those limits that is ihtada. And ya atadun means they cross limits. Ya and muna at the end bring the meaning of present tense. So this would mean they. And one in English word, crossing the limits and boundaries, uh, another word which is transgress. Transgress means someone who crosses the limits. 
So in the English, the good word is trans. Dress. Trans dress is someone who crosses the limits and the boundaries set by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Don't do that," and they purposely did that. So that is crossing the bounds or disobeying and breaking the limits set by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "This is halal, this is haram." They switch that. Okay. Things like that. So that is called transgression. Transgress. Kanu ya atadun. They used to transgress. The same way we have here. Combining kanu, we can say they used to transgress. Okay. So the meaning will be here. They <coughs> used to. Transgress. And transgress means they used to cross the boundaries set by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So these are, these were their crimes that they were committing. That they will deny and reject these signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they kill the prophets. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, whatever boundaries and limits they had set for them, for their life and for their deen, they used to break those things. So, because of all of these things, they continue doing. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's anger came upon them, ghadab came upon them, as well as they have been humiliated, disgraced, and Misery was imposed upon them. So this is the punishment that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is mentioning in the Quran about Bani Israel. So it, historically, it is also true that in every time from the beginning until now, Bani Israel go through this process all the time. Children of Israel and the Jews keep going through all these things, time after time after time. So this is something that has been imposed upon them. They come up and then they start transgressing all the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they get punished. So in history, this, this is happening constantly from the beginning. That they are given some freedom, they are given worldly material things, they become transgressors. And then Allah's punishment and wrath comes upon them, and then they go down. So this is what the Quran, the Quran is mentioning about them. So inshallah we will stop here, and we will continue ayat number 62 next time.